China has successfully landed its latest unmanned craft on the far side of the moon. The Chang'e 6 will collect samples using a robotic arm and also a drill to collect material from beneath the surface. Then it's to attempt a so far unprecedented feat, launching back from the side of the moon that always faces away from Earth. All right, exciting times. Francisco Diego is lecturer at the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University College London. He joins us now from London. So happy to talk to you, sir. There have been a number of unsuccessful attempts made by other countries to land on the far side of the moon. How significant in your assessment is it that China's lunar lander managed to do it for a second time in the row? It is very remarkable. I think China has a very robust uh, uh, space um, program, and especially when it comes to the moon, it has had uh, extraordinary achievements. What we're witnessing now with the Chang'e 6 mission is a kind of replica of the Chang'e 5 a few years back that did exactly what this one is going to do now, uh, to drill and to bring samples, although in that case was from the near side of the moon. And it was a very substantial, uh, well, uh, scientifically very important part of a uh, of samples that brought back uh, this uh, kind of basalt, this kind of uh, lava, solidified lava. That is the most recent lava that uh, we have on the moon, uh, about 2 billion years, which is quite recent in, the, in these uh, terms. And it brought back uh, a couple of kilos of that material. Now, in this case, it's going to be similar, but it's even scientifically even more important for a series of reasons, that uh, the, the place where it's going to land is a, is a, is a, it has extraordinary extraordinary perspectives for the future exploration of the moon. Extraordinary. And what does this mean for China's space program? Well, if it, this is successful, it's going to go ahead. Uh, it keeps going ahead with a very, as I said, very robust and very well-planned uh, uh, set of missions that are going to, uh, to culminate in an international uh, uh, lunar uh, station or permanent station uh, on the moon. Mm -hmm. And how long is this mission expected to last? The mission we have now, I mean, the lander is now landed just a few hours ago, and uh, we have very little information mm -hmm. about We saw only a time lapse of the landing uh, in a very soft area, which is the Apollo Basin within the Aiken Basin, uh, which is the largest uh, crater on the moon. It's a, it's a major, it's like a sea, which is what makes it the, this, uh, this place extremely important. He will stay there drilling and collecting samples for a couple of days. He's going to drill two meters down, which is more or less what the Chang'e 5 did as well. Collect some samples, which are pristine samples, on, a, on a, uh, the largest impact uh, uh, crater on the moon, which is depleted several kilometers deep. Uh, this is a huge basin, more than 2,000 kilometers across. Mm. And he's going to dig material, which is unique. This material is the result of that impact that happened long time ago, mm. and uh, the material is completely different, but it's quite different from the materials that we have in the rest of the surface of the moon. So mm. we want to analyze more about the titanium content, the iron content, even thorium, other kind of, uh, of minerals mm. that are apparently more abundant here. And this is what this mission is going to be successful. Uh, in about uh, uh, three or four weeks time, mm. we will have the samples here back in the laboratories, and we will uh, try to, to uh, uh, um, to confirm mm. all these numbers that we have on these abundances of this chemistry. It's very thrilling what you're what you're outlining there. And, and you know, is that also the reason why there is such keen interest now in the lunar South Pole? It is. It is very important. Remember that uh, this place, the Aitken Basin, well, the Shackleton Crater, which is on the edge of that in the South Pole, and this basin is a... Uh, is, uh, it's going to be the place where uh, the human settlements will be in the future. So this is the, the very first steps towards that, analyzing the, the kind of uh, composition of the terrain and the conditions there. Uh, and, uh, well, it, it's an international collaboration as well with Sweden, Italy, France, and uh, Pakistan as well. Where they were involved in this with different instruments, doing different analysis of the soil, the very thin atmosphere of the moon as well. Uh, and all these are mm -hmm. data that want to be used by future missions to the moon by the by the whole uh, all the space agencies all, all around the world amazing uh, francisco diego lecturer at the department of physics and astronomy at university college london sir thank you so much 
Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.